I think part of this is the fact that so many millions of people for so many decades have been bobbing along uh, to his work too. You know, the, um, the world's biggest music company, Universal now, um, already home to the Beatles, Lady Gaga, Taylor Swift. Now, of course, they get the, the entire back catalogue of one of the most legendary songwriters uh, of all time. And, and to those millions of fans over the many decades, Dylan, of course, has been much more than just a traditional songwriter. He was the, uh, the first songwriter to be awarded the Nobel Prize for Literature back in 2016. So, this is a catalogue valued by so many people for so many different reasons. And it's this precious art of songwriting that the boss of Universal Music suggested might be the key to the enormous value uh, in that catalogue, potentially rumoured to be into the hundreds of millions of euros. Now, we had the famous Michael Jackson purchase of Beatles songs uh, for almost 40 million euros back in 1985. More recently, we've had deals involving Stevie Nicks and Taylor Swift that have topped the 100 million mark. But it's, you know, if we do finally get the precise details of this Dylan deal, then it really is likely to be right up there as one of the biggest music deals of all time. Absolutely, Guy. But interestingly, Dylan does own the rights to his music. What happens to all those artists, the majority, who don't? Yeah, that's a good point, Isabel. It's really tough, isn't it, for those young artists who are, you know, sitting across the table from very big, powerful companies uh, often and trying to negotiate a route through to realise their dream. Very hard for them not to uh, be tempted to trade away those really valuable music rights. Um, the former manager um, of Elton John and Beyonce uh, described investing in music royalties as a better bet than gold or oil. You know, so it, it's really um, becoming more and more of a valuable commodity over the years. And you know, more widely, music is another sector where we have seen uh, a pandemic effect. During the, the height of the, the COVID crisis, um, services like Spotify um, saw a huge increase in the number of uh, users. And it's created a knock-on effect for those people, those companies, those artists that do hang on, that do manage to hold on to those uh, music rights, particularly some of those older songs. Um, you know, now, after a terrible few years uh, across the industry, when, when the, we were really relying on declining CD sales, there has been a bit of a, a revitalizing effect going on across the music sector. There's a lot of money, frankly, floating about. The problem is, though, that there's still a concentration of rights and a concentration of wealth. So, you know, the internet and new technology has been great. It's created a vast range of opportunities for young new artists to be heard. Sadly, though, not so many chances for them to get paid 